All right, Sketchpad Podcast, we back. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to the page. So today we got a special guest in the building, uh, the 4KO. You know what it is, man. So look, we're going to be back. Sketch. Who raised you? was crazy oh my god uh, children are too young to make those type of choices for themselves you know that's why they have parents oh you need each other what yo i yeah, can't understand know. it neither so look let's get into the rebel moon universe here man because mm. oh yeah yeah some, yeah like, i know s got some questions for this one um so you, you got something to say s oh yeah, yeah. um all right, so this, uh, like I've watched a lot of Zack Snyder stuff thus far, and let and let me be correct before we get fully into the Rebel Moon stuff. I'm an overall comic book fan. I don't, yeah. I don't just, I don't, I don't pick and choose sides. Now, I I can say because because like I, I I I I've watched Marvel more. I can say that. But I don't pick and choose sides with DC or Marvel. You know what I'm saying? I'm just a fan exactly. by nature, straight like that. Just like my wrestling stuff. Like, I'm a fan by nature. You understand? Uh, but we'll talk about that later. Get into Rebel Moon. That joint was fire. I've never seen anything depicted like that in my whole entire life. It... It, it had it had a little bit of everything that uh, a sci-fi thriller action, whatever would, would which you would want to have in a film. The, the 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 part my favorite part was with the girl that looked like the girl that looked like the Undertaker. She had the uh, the two <laughs> blades and she was fighting the uh, the spider the spider lady. I swore up and down that this lady was going to give her the business. And she found a way to chop this woman down the size and kill her. I was like, yo, that was crazy. Yeah. It was just, it, it was amazing film. And that, and that girl, the, the lead actor, I forgot her name. The lead actor. So, so yeah. She, yeah, she was great. She was great. I don't know why she gets so much hate. Because I was seeing things on the internet dated six back, six, about six, seven years ago. And I and I told and I'll talk to my boy about it, and they were saying that she was like a man or something like that, and she's not. Oh, no, man, no, she, yeah, she man, always did not. a good job, man. She did a good job in Keeman. I like the Mummy reboot. I don't know if you guys liked it or not. I feel like she did a good job in that film, mm -hmm. and she did a wonderful job in Rebel Moon. Like mm -hmm. I was like, oh my goodness, she could really carry a film. Because yeah. before this, she yeah. really and truly didn't have her yeah. own movie like that, right? But she can carry a film. I feel as if she has this look that is just fierce, man. And I think that's why Zack Snyder cast her, dude. Like that army scene when it was on the battle and stuff and she had the short hair and all that. It fit her, man. I, I, I swear, if she walks around like that in person, I, I might have to file for divorce with my wife. <laughs> like for real, she got bad, dude. She got bad. You know, like she is dope for sure. The, the, uh, right? The she, scene, she that bad. The, the the one scene that uh that she had when uh when she went inside the barn because they were they were they were putting the beat down on the on the young boy and the girl. So then she came in, and she was battling with herself, like contemplating, like, should, should she really get involved? And then when she really got involved, oh my God. She got involved. Mm -hmm. She oh got what God, I, man. What I like about Rebel Moon is the fact of it's, it's a recruitment movie, right? The movie starts off with her as the main character, showing you all what she can do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then for everybody they are adding to the story, they're showing you what all they can do, which is why Nemesis was fighting the spider and everybody was watching the fight. 
they wanted to see what she was going to be able to bring to the table. General mm-hmm. Titus, you're going to see what he's going to be able to bring to the table in the scar giver. Mm-hmm. That's the only one that they didn't show you exactly what he's capable of. General Titus, and it may be an extended cut, but mm-hmm. everyone that they recruited, they showed you what they was good at. That's what mm-hmm. I like about the film. Everybody sat back and, okay, this, this is what you bring to the table. Even Blood Axe, right? It's mm-hmm. like Blood Axe was just badass through the whole thing. Ray Fisher, you my, you my boy, bro. I love it. But it's like they're developed. Even in this short version, these characters are developed. And I think mm-hmm. a lot of people don't like it because of that. You know, I, I don't know why. I don't. To me, they did a good job. Now, I did say that it's not Zack Snyder's best work, but I do know in my head that a Cindy cut will be. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> I know. You can't really cut a Zack Snyder film down yeah. because he intends it to be long. That's what mm-hmm. I love about the guy. Yeah. He mm-hmm. intends it to be three hours long. Did you know that there's four versions of Watchmen? I didn't know that. That's, that's... Oh, no. Nah. No, I didn't know that. Dude, they, they got the they got the they got the theatrical version, the director's cut, the extended cut, and the the extended director's cut. This thing is like five hours long. You hear me? Wow. It's five. There's animation in there. It's like it's going back and forth to the past with with like this animation with these other characters and stuff, and it, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. But I would say that the three hour and 30 minute cut is the perfect movie for yeah. Watchmen. You, you got to look it up, dude. There's four versions of that film. I believe I got wow. that one. So, I, so as far as Rebel Moon goes, right? Um, I I watched it like five times already. And you know, I'm going to you, I'm be honest with you. I put it on at night when I'm in my room and I just put it on. It's something about right. that movie that the movie's not perfect, but there's something about the movie that it's easy to follow, and it's and it's. I feel like I don't know. It's one of those movies. The world. Watch and just and just and and just keep watching. You know what I'm saying? Like it's fun to watch for me. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I, right. I, I felt like that when I watched it. And the thing is, the movie's it's like two and a half hours, but it don't it only feels about an hour and fifteen minutes. Right, it don't feel long. It don't feel long. And I think what you like about the film is you're in, you're interested in the world. Because mm-hmm. that's one thing I like about it. I want to see where this goes. Yeah. I want to see what other locations that we're going to visit. I want to see what other ships and dreadnoughts they got out there. Yeah. I want to see this. You know what I mean? Because we already got a little bit of a scene with that, that army fighting and all that there. But I know for a fact that there's more going on within this universe. Yeah. And that would intrigue me, bro. Like, for real. I, I would love to see that. I think that... So I was talking to him about... We did a little review on it, and I was talking to him about it's certain things where I know for a fact that it's going to make the movie 10 times better. So when they met Nemesis, right? When they showed Nemesis, they was on an elevator. They didn't meet her. They didn't talk to her. Not, and they was on an elevator. So how did they get mm-hmm. on an elevator? You know what I'm saying? So obviously they had to meet her somewhere and talk to her first, then get on the elevator. Right. Like they seen a show she so they just totally cut that scene out. Then there's certain parts with cut it out. certain parts of the of the um the movie where I know for a fact that is is brutal and they cut a lot of stuff out. And even mm. in the beginning with Jimmy, right? At the end you see Jimmy with the antlers on, but the, you really don't know how he got the antlers because they cut right. it out. So when the director's cut come out, I already know that it's going to be 10 times better because I enjoy the movie the way it is. But I know the director's right. going to be better because every one of Zack Snyder's director's cuts are phenomenal. Even right. Well, that's how you originally intended. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So when when they say, when people say, because I, 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 did a, I did a couple of videos. I don't know if you've seen them. Oh, but I did a couple of videos where I was talking about all the channels that put the thumbnail Oh, this movie sucks. This movie's trash. So I did three videos talking about all these guys. And I got so much hate on all these videos. One of them got like a thousand views. And they're talking like crazy to me. 
oh, you you were just a Snyder cultist, blah 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 blah. But it's mother, always that way. The thing is, like, like if you don't like the movie, right? Then okay, you don't like the movie, but you deliberately put in the title stuff that's not even didn't even happen in the movie. It's like how you could, how, you didn't what? even see the movie because a lot of these people. And I want to ask you about this. Oh, when it comes to Rotten Tomatoes and all these critics and the fans who hate Snyder on, on Rotten Tomato, there was a guy that literally said, oh, this is Rotten Tomato. I can leave a, a score without watching a movie. Yeah, the movie's a zero. This is a movie. Right. One, star. <laughs> it's one star. So right. let me ask you this. Given the, the climate of 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 uh, people saying that the movie isn't good. Do you think that Snyder has the the, the uh, what they call the Streisand effect, where people say he's not good and he gets even more popular because of that? You think that that's the case? You talk about like Stanley Kubrick. Yes. 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 It's like the more they talk about him in a negative way, they bring more attention to his films. Yeah. See, a lot of people didn't get to check out of the, the Snyderverse films, right? But now they are, because it's like this talk about, oh, man, what the, they rebooting this, they reboot, what, what are they talking about? And it's bringing interest to it. Mm-hmm. And they're intertwining Snyder's name in that because it's always labeled the Snyderverse, you know? So they're yeah. looking for the reason why you call it the Snyderverse. Yeah. And I read a guy the other day, he watched Batman vs. Superman for the first time, and he said, man, that was great. He actually regretted missing out on watching that film in 2016. Man. He actually regretted it, dude. He said, man, I wish I would have started in 2016. And he watched the theatrical version, not the three-hour version. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> but they allow Rotten Tomatoes to deteriorate them from going to see a movie. And that's the worst people. Yeah. That's the worst people. I don't never say on my channel, don't go see a film, right? I will always say, look, I don't like this film. You go check it out. If you yeah. like it, let yeah. me know what you liked about it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But there are some people, they just feel as if you're absolutely delusional for yeah. liking a said film. Like, I like the Hellboy reboot. A lot of people ain't like that. One guy told me, man, I'm retarded because I like the film. Right? Yeah. <laughs> what, what, are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> come, come on, man. Come on. It doesn't work that way. Even the greatest film of all time isn't liked by everyone who ever seen it. Exactly. I know people who hate Scarface. Like really. I know people who hate Gone with the Wind, dude. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And Scarface, man, I love Scarface. But if you don't like it, you don't like it. What can I do about it? It ain't, it ain't your flavor. So let me ask I you. Can't this. Make you like it. Let me ask you this. Where <laughs> I noticed it. I know you said in the the uh, Rebel Moon has ninety days. To surpass a certain number, where is it at now? Do you know? Seventy million was the last the last um number I just recorded. Matter of fact, hold on for a sec. Oh, I, my <laughs> light went off. Give me, give me one second, brother. Give me one second. That's okay. Actually, I got the numbers. I got the numbers. Right here. Yep. Yep. I might well keep that alive. I got it right here. It was twenty four million views in the first week. 34 million views, three, four for those out there who don't know, because I think a lot of people didn't catch on to that on my channel. Yeah. So <laughs> it had 11 million views in the third week. Now, many people may say that that's bad, but no, that's right in line with every film in Netflix's history. 10 to 15 million views in its third week. Rebel Moon did 11 million. It's literally at 70 million views after 22 days, it has officially moved into Netflix's top 25 films of all time. Yeah. And you know what's crazy? The crazy thing is when it's going to get more views in uh, March and April because everybody's going to go watch that or, or the first one before the second one comes out. So people go. That's why I said it, dude. and it's gonna get more. This was strategic, man. Yeah, they did this on purpose, man. Netflix not crazy. They did this, bro. Netflix and Warner Brothers, right? See, 
what Warner Brothers did was they told Zack Snyder, man, look, Justice League is entirely too long. They they told you that when they said the film had to be below two hours, one hour, 59 minutes, and 59 seconds long for a Justice League film. I asked me how that was supposed to work, right? But instead of them taking that film and saying, you know, we could break this to two with one budget, they didn't do it. Netflix did. Netflix took one film because it was only supposed to be one Rebel Moon film. We found out like in the middle of last year that it was going to be two parts, if you remember that or not, right? Yeah. What, what Netflix said was, Zach, you have given us enough footage for two movies, and we're going to do it like that. We're going to release one film, and we're going to release the second film. You know what? We're going to get four films out of this. We're going to release a, a cut version, then a extended version, then a, a, another cut version, then another extended version. So Netflix did this on purpose, right? And, and that's what a lot of people don't get. It's, it's almost as if they don't know why Netflix is king of this whole screaming service. Yeah. And the reason for that being is they have it figured out. While all these other movie studios are trying to figure it out, they wish that they could be Netflix, dude. Netflix makes more money than the big studios, despite not even having a theatrical release, bro. Yeah. Think about that for a second. Yeah. They don't even need to release their movies in the theater, and they still can make money. The other movie studios, can they do that? No. They, they can't do it. They want to be like Netflix. Netflix is where it's at, dude, for real. That's why you got a Paramount Plus, you got a, a, a Peacock, and, and I don't know why the NFL decided to put the playoff game on Peacock. They they wrong for that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You got Amazon. <laughs> you got HBO Max. Hey, what's the other one you got now? You got you got all uh, Disney Plus. Man, you got all kind of streaming services trying to be like Netflix. That's and what's crazy about it all, all these streaming services, right? took all of those films, most of them, from Netflix to start their own streaming service, and they still is not bigger than Netflix. And I say this a lot. It's some things I don't like on Netflix, and there's some things I like. But the reason why Netflix right. is so big is because it's accessible to everybody like YouTube, number one. Number two, most people will run to Netflix before they run to HBO Max because they look at it like, well, you have to have cable for HBO Max. You know what I'm saying? Even though you just, you can have it. Right. But Netflix has put themselves in a position where they have something for everyone. You know what I'm saying? Everybody. And a lot of Everybody. People, a lot of people don't like certain things on Netflix, but a lot of people love everything on Netflix. And that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? Man, I've been subscribed for years. <clears throat> you know, for literally years. Just this month, I didn't even pay my HBO Max bill. You want to know why? Because I think I don't even want it anymore. Man, look. <laughs> Man, I look. think I don't even want it anymore. I feel the same way about Disney Plus. I don't even believe that I want it anymore. Yeah. The only ones I'm willing to pay for is Netflix. And the only reason why Disney Plus got paid this month is because I forgot to cancel the automatic payment. That's the only reason why. That's the only reason why I do. Not even lying to you. I said, damn, I forgot to cancel the automatic payment. Yeah. But I'm gonna get on next month. I don't, I don't, I don't think I want to keep it, dude. I really don't. It's, it's almost as if they're releasing shows on Disney Plus that I'm not really into. And I'm not saying that people can't be into them. I'm just saying that they just suck. So what I'm paying for, Mm -hmm. I'm not even enjoying anything. I just watched One Piece on Netflix. Great. Right. You know what I'm saying? Even mm -hmm. though people don't like the Cowboy Bebop, I like that. They got a mm -hmm. lot of things on Netflix that I can like and enjoy. The other ones, I'm kind of, you know, taking if I want to keep them or not. I got a question. So I got, I actually got a few questions. But my first question was, since you mentioned it, was Cowboy Bebop. So, Cowboy Bebop, right? Are they canceling it? Because I'm hearing yeah. something that they're not they're not going to uh, do a second season. Why? Yeah, is they, they 
I guess it didn't have enough views. I guess it didn't have enough views. And what's crazy about it was great. It was great. It was it was fire. I thought I was the only one, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I am telling you, and, and with, from my understanding, they already had season two filmed. So the, the, to, to put a point out there is, if they believe Rebel Moon isn't a success, the second film would have been canceled already. Most of the time, when they cancel a TV show or even a part two of a film, they already recorded that for Netflix. Mm-hmm. Already. But they they, re- they reported, what, two months after Cowboy Bebop came out that they wasn't giving us a season two, man. Yeah, yeah. Two I, was, months I after. was pretty disappointed. I was pretty disappointed yeah. when I seen that. I was disappointed. My, man, the only thing other, you can do is watch it. Yeah. My other question was, and... um. And I, I believe I talked to Funeral Man about this was, um, all right, so with Superman, right? Why does it seem like every single year, the more that Superman evolves, they seem like they, br- they, they, they bring him back a notch, like they make him weaker instead of stronger. Because like Superman is an ever evolving character that has so many abilities that they have not even displayed on film yet. And it just seems like to me that they they're taken away from him. Like they're not even displaying his full potential as a hero and potential as a villain. Because let's 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 be clear, there's certain things that Superman cannot control. And if he gets captured under those spells, whatever, he could be controlled for a certain amount of time. We even seen it. In the movie, we even seen it in one of the cartoons. I think it was uh, right. uh, Flashpoint. I think it was Flashpoint. Uh, oh yeah, Dark Side. Yeah, it was that one where where he was. Well, that, that was Justice League. Huh? No, I'm saying Dark Justice Side. Justice League. Control- Dark Side was controlling. The, the, right. That was um. That was that was the, that was the Justice League. The Justice League animated TV show. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out why why are they doing this to Superman? Why can't they just let him be him and let him evolve into the character that he's supposed? I already to be? know the answer for I already know the answer for this one, man. They claim that Superman is boring, so what they try to do is they try to humanize him to bring him down to a certain level so people can relate. You know, that's that's what they try to do now. Personally, that could be an interesting Superman, right? But in my opinion, I like the Superman that can literally pull a huge boat by a chain over a block of ice. I love a Superman that can carry a space shuttle down and land it. I love a Superman that can stop an earthquake from happening, even though they didn't show that in the movie. I love a Superman who can withstand a nuclear bomb, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I like about Superman. They're always trying to pit him against Lex Luthor. Man, they got Mongo out there. They got Darkseid out there. They got Brainiac out there. They got so many other characters that you can bring into this to put some damage to Superman without dumbing him down. One of my new favorite characters is Ulysses. He was in the New 52 I don't know if you guys got to read that or not, but he was a character who could absorb energy, right? He was a human, but he went off into another dimension and he came back with this certain kind of power. And man, he was giving Superman a run for his money. I I ain't lying Mm -hmm. to you. If Superman didn't release his new power that he accumulated, then he was going to do Superman in, just like that. Mm -hmm. And I would love to see him in live action. Mm -hmm. We would love to see that. Even um, what's the other guy? K- his name is KL. He was another Kryptonian that was yeah. exposed to to different sunlight, and I thought that was extremely cool. He was exposed to a black sun, a red sun, a white sun, and he had all kind of different powers from that. And he even was given Superman. Well, actually, Superman never even beat him, as, yeah. as I recall. Uh, yeah, I think he just gave up or whatever because he was in love with Supergirl before Krypton blew up and she got him to calm down. 
he was tearing Superman a new one, dude. Mm -hmm. I ain't lying to you. And Superman was punching him, and he wasn't even feeling it. That's how strong that guy was. I would love is to see that about that. Is this is this the uh is oh, all right? Well, it's probably not. What is the one the black Superman? The, there was a black Superman that also they were thinking about bringing into the movies like sometime Val's in their eyes. future. But I, Val's huh? eyes. Val's eyes. Val, how strong Val's is he? It's actually two black Supermans. It's Val Zod and, and uh, what's the other black one name? It's two black Supermans. From Steel? No, it's another one. Not Steel. It's Val Zod and it's uh, it's is it Cal? Cal, Cal, Cal. Yeah, his name Cal or something. Yeah. I can't remember his name. Like Cal something. something. Yeah. But go ahead. So do, are they are they going to are they going? Do you think they're going to ever like bring those guys to life and put them on film? Or? Never, never. Mm. Maybe with James Gunn, you never know. Cause look at James Gunn. Wait, wait, look. You got Superman Legacy already, right? Hey, I, I said Superman Legacy has more features than the mid two thousand hip, hip hop mixtape, right? And then you got Batman the Brave and the Bold. If you remember the Brave and the Bold, that's a whole lot of characters, dude. That's a whole lot of characters. And then you got the Authority. It's like it's this whole universe. It's just full of teams. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's like it's a you you might you just might who knows when mm -hmm. Superman Legacy come out they might have two black Superman flying over the sky, one of them have a fro, you know what I'm saying? One of them have a fade or something like that. <laughs> hey, you, just, you just never know. You just never know. <laughs> I, you just never came from supercuts. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what I'm saying. I, I mean, think about it like this: even with the Suicide Squad. Think about his choices in there to bring to life, P particularly Polka Dot Man, right? Even though his powers was cool, the concept of this guy is goofy. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just like his choices. It's just the, the characters, it was just so cartoonish. It's like anything could be possible mm -hmm. with James Gunn. Yeah. Anything. Mm -hmm. any, anything could be possible. So you just never know. You may get that black Superman. Hey, you might even get the Black Wally West. Yeah. yeah. You might even get the Black Wally. And I hope I get Steel. I mean, I already know that we may not even get the Snyderverse, but all you can do is hope that this guy can do a great job and win us all over. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, I have my doubts. I have my doubts. You know what I'm saying? But it's up to him to get the job accomplished. Well, I, got, I, got more, I got one more question for you, then we're gonna get out of here. Um, what is your top five comic book movies of all time? The top five comic book movies of all time. Okay, let me let me go from number five. Let me go from number five. Let me. I will go number five is Watchmen. Watchmen. I will go number five. Watchmen. I will go go number four. Man of Steel, I will go number three, number three, Captain America, Civil War. I absolutely love that film, dude. I'm not even lying to you. Number two will be Zack Snyder's Justice League, and number one is the extended version of Batman versus Superman. Okay. Actually, right, so that, that was for that. Let me do mine. Um, go ahead with it. Go ahead with it. Let me hear it. My number five is Batman versus Superman. The extended cut. Okay. My number five. Number four is uh uh what is it? Um what is it? Uh my number four would be um would be uh uh Justice League the uh Justice League the Snyder Cut. Okay. Number three would be uh, Man of Steel. My number two would be Dark Knight, Batman, The Dark Knight. And A lot of people one, got that one. My number one would be Watchmen. That's Watchmen. Right. I thought you were about to say Avengers Endgame. No. <laughs> I mean, the video game in my top ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in my top ten, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go on, wait for Doom. Well, uh, mine's. I'm a. Uh, 
I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start from number one, go to five. So, all right. My number one. My number one. My number one was definitely uh, Iron Man. Iron Man. I believe Iron Ooh. Man two. My that I. Iron Man was off the chain. Iron like, Man two. You know I mean? It was. It was. I, I didn't. I didn't like three. I didn't like three because I felt like they watered it down and they did all this. Other right. stuff. I like one. I like one too. But I feel like I feel like two, two out of out of the three that came out was was like was like the the more dominant one, but I, I hated three. I couldn't stand it. I barely got through it. I barely got through it when <laughs> I went to the, the, Mandarin, the Mandarin. The Mandarin. The Mandarin. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't even like what how Mandarin. Him. Yeah, the Mandarin. What Mandarin? The Mandarin was in Shang Chi. <laughs> Mandarin, not that I, I hated it. I hated it. Um, my number two film, my number two film was uh the Spider Man, the one um the one when he uh when he became uh when he got introduced to the symbiote and That's it three. dropped Spider Man two. It was three. 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 Yeah. yeah. That's for Sandman. Fucking. Sandman. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was three. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, it it had it had me tripping when this man's personality switched and he was out there dancing in the middle of the street and the females were just like, <laughs> yo, I was like, yo, I was like, yo, he's tripping. Yeah. So that was my that was my number two. My number three, my number three was the Captain America, Captain America, um. Thing was soldier? Winter, so- Winter, Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. That was number my three. That joint was. That's what I'm talking book. about. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was oh my three, especially, and and I'm mad because um, they had George Saint Pierre in there, and then he didn't. They didn't. They didn't. I I wish I wish they gave him longer fighting scenes because I was like, yo, they got Saint Pierre in the UFC. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he he, 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 he had a few scenes here and there, here and there with him, but he didn't have a, a long enough scene for me. And then my uh my number four my number four joint was uh it's uh, actually it's the uh actual the a cartoon the flashpoint flashpoint uh the uh, paradox uh, uh, yeah the paradox yeah that was my number four and my reason being was for one the the cartoons like I'm a I, I I'm an artist I draw so like. The animation in that film, I felt, was off the chain. And then on top mm. of that, they show they show Superman how I wanted him to be depleted for a very long time. Like this guy was looking vicious, especially when mm. he turned against them for a brief moment. I was like, "Yo, this is crazy." Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that so so much. And of course, you know what I mean. My. Uh, my uh, my number five will probably be uh, between between the, uh, the 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 Snyder cut of um of Justice League and will probably be between um I know yo what y'all gonna say you know what I mean but I I did I did like it Endgame and that's only because Endgame was fire yeah 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 I and and. <laughs> My only reason, no, he laughing, and my only reason for it is because, like, I, 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 the way, the way they got at Thanos when they all, when they all came out the, uh, came out. Yeah, the corner, and that was fire. That, that was fire. Was crazy. Everybody. Was it, was, off the... it was fire and unexpected. That's that's what it was. It was fire and unexpected. Yeah, I I did I definitely did not expect that because that was, I was ten, like, that was ten, mm-hmm. ten years in the making or something like that. Ten years in the yeah. making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. it was yeah. worth every every year. Yeah. It was worth yeah. every year, every month, yeah. every week, every day, every hour, every minute, every second. It was worth it, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, that, that's my five right there, you know. But yeah, hey, man, like, yeah. yeah. But hey, man, listen. Oh, you gotta come on again, man. This is this is great, man. This is a great show. Yeah, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back on. I'm about to go watch some football now and drink this some alcohol. Hey, appreciate man. it, man. We appreciate you. Happy New Year to you too, brother. Same to you, brother. Same to you. Well, we we getting ready to celebrate Mardi Gras out here now. So New Year's, we to turn the page, you know. 
Hey, <laughs> we gonna have you on again, man. Right after when Rebel Moon Two come out, we gonna have you on again, man. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You already know. Or anytime, man. If I can make it, just you know, if you got some something you got coming up, just text me and I'll let you know if I can make it or not. Right. Just, just let me know. Yep, definitely, man. Yeah. All right, man. Thank you for coming, man. We we'll see you, bro. Appreciate it, man. Take care. All right. Take care. Peace.